GoPuff is a stupid app. It's poorly designed, 90% of the products are marked up beyond reason, it bugs out all the time, they mistreat and underpay their drivers, and the selection of products is only marginally better than that of a Walgreens. And yet, I've been placing several GoPuff orders every month for at least half a year now. Over the past couple years, all the credit card companies started jumbling their benefits around such that they were impossible to track. So I signed up for an app called Card Pointers, which gives me a rundown every month of which credit card benefits I have. New things pop up all the time, like, oh, suddenly you get $10 in Uber cash every month, or you can get a big bonus if you buy something at Lowe's this week. One major thing that I didn't know is that each Chase card that I owned was eligible for a $10 GoPuff credit each month, and I have four of those. So I downloaded GoPuff, and I find out that they do something called five cent sips. That means with each order, you can add up to five full-size alcoholic beverage samples for a nickel each. Ever since this discovery, I've been fine-tuning the beautiful game of crafting the perfect GoPuff purchase for maximum value. So, one of my Chase cards is a business card, and even though it is a big funny joke for commentators to post, nice job, Shaq, with this video you've managed to write off dozens of GoPuff orders just like your last trip to Vegas. GoPuff orders aren't a business expense, so I don't use it for this. That leaves me with three usable cards, two for ordering and one for fam membership. Remember those five cent sips? Well, now they're actually 25 cents each, and they incur a $2 to $4 alcohol fee on each order. Hardly worth it for a couple cans of booze. But that fee, as well as the delivery fee, goes away with fan membership. So it's worth getting as part of my GoPuff gambit. You can start with a month-long free trial, and then you start to see that fan members get access to insane weekly deals. Sorry for the word choice here. I'm telling you, this app is very bad. Look at these promos called TikTok Made Me Buy It, Big Snack Energy, and Hot Girl Nightstand. The insane deals lately include two discounts that I actually care about. $2 for a dozen organic free-range eggs, and $6 for a big bottle of high-quality Arbequina olive oil. You need to know that there's a $5 small order fee for orders that are under $12.95. But as long as I stay above that and stick to my strategy, I bypass the alcohol fees, I bypass the small order fee, and then when the final bill comes in for, say, $16, it's really only 6 bucks after the chase credit for a not-quite six-pack, a dozen good quality eggs, a bottle of good quality olive oil, and maybe a bag of candy or something fun. You should also know that Every day you can spin a little wheel for a random number of GoPuff points and fan members get to spin that wheel twice. So I save up my points until I have 100,000 of them and then I can use them for a big $30 off total order coupon. I know this all sounds complicated, but it's just a matter of spinning the wheels when I wake up and then placing the right orders once a month per card. The last discount that you might be eligible for is a $100 total credit for new signups when they use the referral code in the description, but now it's starting to sound like an ad, and it's not. Let me be clear, the app sucks, the business model makes no sense, and half of the reason I spend so much effort min-max milking their asses is I have no doubt the whole company will go under within a year. With all that out of the way, can I talk about some of the stuff that I've tried this year? First, canned Kim Crawford. This is my favorite commodity-grade wine, and now it's back, in can form. I used to buy five of these with every single order, even the order I placed for a pregnancy test. That was a funny final receipt. Health beers and seltzers. I tried Modelo Oro, Heineken Silver, and every health beer and vodka seltzer launched to compete with Michelob Ultra and White Claw, but Blue Moon Light Sky was the only one I could tolerate. Let us allow the hard seltzer trend to die now. It's too much. Tony's Chocolate Only. This is the discovery that will stick with me the most. TC is like the ultimate version of those fundraiser chocolate bars that kids sell door to door. Still definitively American in its flavor profile, but velvety and luxurious enough to feel special. The Little Auto Store 6-inch Adjustable Wrench. I was in a pickle, I needed a little adjustable wrench, and this one showed up for effectively free. I just think that it's very funny that it literally has Little Auto Store just stamped right there into the side. Kind of cute. Prime Energy, G Fuel, Goat Energy, each and every one of these ready-to-drink sugar-free energy drinks were unbearable. I kept anticipating one of them finally being any good, but I ended up just pouring them all out, one after one. Just vile. Burgers from BurgerFi. In the early days of this scheme, I would pretty much just use it to get a free burger once in a while, but since they've removed it to make way for cheaper gas station-style foods like grilled cheese sandwiches, I can't do it anymore. Pizzas from The Mean Tomato. There are a ton of in-house GoPuff brands, and The Mean Tomato is one of them. This pizza is, shockingly, not that bad. 
The crust is airy. The cheese is the really cheap kind, but all in all, I'd rate it somewhere between Little Caesars and Domino's. Skinny dipped unicorn cashews. What if cashews were coated in that stuff from pink and white animal cookies? Well, they taste really freaking good. Kin. I tried a bunch of startup products like Hop Water and Poppy thanks to GoPuff, but Kin was one of the most remarkable. It's a functional beverage whose claims I would never trust, but the taste is like that of a good Aperol or Campari cocktail. Kind of worm woody and bitter, but still lots of citrus and not too sweet. It's a shame that these are like $5 each or I'd have one every day. Jimmy Dean 4.9 ounce sausage egg and cheese biscuit sandwich. I swear I used to eat these as a kid, so I bought one for some hungover nostalgia, but it did not register as food fit for humans. Like a really crumbly salt lick, truly unbearable. If this is the same product as the ones that I was thinking about, they must have gotten way worse over the decades. Momofuku noodles, pretty good, but $13 for a four pack? Come now, David. Mr. Beast Feastables Bar. These are so much smaller than you're imagining them to be and nothing special. And finally, the aforementioned clear blue pregnancy tests. I've only bought one of these, but so far they're batting a thousand.